Hello there, welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug. Yes, I'm back again with another fountain pen review. This beautiful Visconti Mythos Apollo. I've had an up and down relationship with Visconti over the years. My first expensive fountain pen was a Visconti Van Gogh Starry Night. I remember how excited I was to get on the C train, go downtown to an actual pen shop, and purchase this Italian beauty. I came home feeling rather guilty for having spent over $300 Canadian for a pen. I also came home with my first bottle of Hiroshizuku ink, especially for the pen. My excitement turned to horror as I discovered the barrel was cracked. I got an instant barrel exchange from the retailer, but the bloom was off the rose. The nib was small, the section was slippery, and once I became a little savvier about pens and prices, my initial excitement and awe turned to embarrassment about having overpaid for a steel nib fountain pen. Next, I bought a Visconti Breeze for my wife for her birthday. The Breeze has a resin section instead of the metal, and it was a cool color, and she loves the pen. My friend Ron gave me his Visconti Rembrandt on a semi-permanent loan, and I'm still impressed by this fountain pen, more so for the number six size nib than the same slick metal section. Pen friend Sean loaned me his Visconti Homo Sapiens for review, and my ardor for getting one of those unique pens made from Vesuvius lava was cooled somewhat by the uncontrollable nib. When Visconti came out with the Mirage model, I was smitten again, this time because they made something similar to the Van Gogh, but with a resin section and fluted body, and at half the price. I liked the Mirage very much, but it showed up with another cracked barrel, and even after it was quickly replaced by the retailer, I didn't end up writing with it very much. And so my opinion of Visconti plunged yet again. Then the Mythos model came out which, in my mind at least, is a major update to the Mirage. I sold both my Van Gogh and Mirage and ordered the Mythos immediately. Now it's here. See why my opinion of Visconti has risen yet again right now. <laughs> And yet another package from DHL Extortion Incorporated. When I did my last pen sale, I sold my Visconti Mirage because I wasn't using it. A nice pen and everything. But I also had my sight set on a new Visconti uh, because they kind of upgraded the Mirage and fixed some of the things that were frustrating about that pen for me. So I ordered one and it's here. DHL Express. Let's open it up. And here's the box. And yes, it's from Applebaum. A nice card from Applebaum this time. With what's that? Well, does that look like a sailor on there? Why, thank you, Team Applebaum. The Stroop Waffles and a box. Again, nicely wrapped by Applebaum. And here's the box. These Visconti boxes are very nice. V pattern, Visconti, Mirage Mythos, Apollo, fountain pen. Oh, I don't remember ordering a fine nib, but we shall see. And there's our Visconti pillow, and there's the pen, and there's the extra nib. Yes, I got a La Fenice nib for Ron's uh, Leonardo Momento Zero sand fountain pen. And underneath we have a Visconti booklet with some fountain pen porn and the my pen system. Visconti guarantees this product against defects and workmanship so we have to go to the website to find out how many years that is. And let's take the pen out and there's the pen. Isn't that gorgeous folks? Look at that. It's got the Mirage body and cap with the fluted style which I really really liked. But the big deal on this compared to the regular Mirage, for me anyway, is that nib. That's now a number six size nib. And I just couldn't get my head around the number five size nib on this pen. And I think this looks excellent. Okay, so I called Yoast and told him I don't have the right nib on this pen. And he sent out this package immediately. So this is like five days later. And here's the new nib. Make sure I put the right one back. I'll send that off to Amsterdam. And there's my broad nib. All's right with the world. And it has a magnetic closure for posting and for capping. Isn't that wonderful? 
I can't wait to ink this up. We're gonna have to have some kind of a bronze ink for this, I think. Visconti Mythos. And I'll show the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, and then provide a writing sample. And then I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. Visconti has upgraded the Mirage model with this new version called the Mythos, honoring the god Apollo, Zeus, and Aphrodite in the colors bronze, black, and violet, respectively. In Greek mythology, the son of Zeus and Leto, and twin brother of Artemis, Apollo was the god of archery, music, and dance, truth and prophecy, healing and diseases, the sun and light, and poetry. Big portfolio. You're a tough guy. I am Apollo. And I am the Tsar of all the Russians. Zeus was the king of all the gods and ruled from Mount Olympus and was the god of sky and thunder. Having many wives and consorts, Zeus fathered many divine and heroic offspring, including Apollo, Artemis, Hermes, Persephone, Dionysus, Perseus, Heracles, or Hercules in Roman mythology, Helen of Troy, Minos, and the Muses. He obviously had a very busy pen. Aphrodite was the half-sister of Apollo, depending on where you get your Greek gossip, the ancient Greek tabloids, or Homer. According to Hesiod, Aphrodite sprung from the severed genitals of Uranus. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Perhaps having its genitals severed is why the planet Uranus rolls on its side in constant agony. But I digress. The daughter of Zeus and Dion, the goddess, not the lounge singer, Aphrodite is associated with love, lust, beauty, pleasure, passion, and procreation, though probably not in that order. Her Roman counterpart is Venus, and hence the Roman naming of the Greek statue of Aphrodite, Venus de Milo. With all these severed arms and genitals, it's surprising any procreation went on at all. So the colors, brown, black, and violet. Your choice. I chose brown. And it is lovely. It swirls with sparkling bronze and gold. Overall, it's a medium-sized pen made of resin and matte gold-plated brass hardware. The body and cap are fluted, and it has the magnetic closure and the spring-loaded clip. It is very much an upgrade from the Visconti Mirage, and we'll look at those upgrades as we examine the pen. From the top, we see the rounded top finial with the spring-loaded clip running over the top of it. This is exactly the same clip from the Mirage, only this one is matte gold plated brass. The curve of the clip, of course, is an echo of the famous arch of the Ponte Vecchio Bridge in Florence, the home of Visconti. The clip is laser engraved, Visconti in negative image on both sides and is much stiffer than the Van Gogh or the Rembrandt. Rembrandt moves very nicely. The cap and the barrel are rounded and fluted tapers, both angling up to a large center band. The whole pen is basically a fluted Greek column with the center band deeply engraved with the block letters Mythos on a background of cross hatching and thunderbolts or the edges of Mount Olympus, your choice, in relief around the band. And the Y in Mythos is in the Greek style. The asymmetry of this pen is classic. And when you look at the pen vertically like this, you can really see the ideal of Greek perfection in the overall visual balance. Did you know that the Greeks were so obsessed with perfection, truth, and beauty that the columns of the Parthenon were made to slightly angle in all the way around the structure to counteract the humanized tendency to make large, tall objects look like they're falling over? It's a kind of forced perspective for the viewer. The top of the barrel is eased away from the bottom of the cap band, a really nice touch, and the barrel continues to taper down to the bottom finial, which is a rounded disc of gold-plated brass and has a magnetic insert, which has the Visconti V logo. And this is the Visconti MyPen system, where you can remove that disc with a magnet and replace it with any of the Visconti MyPen system. They have semi-precious jewels and your initials, if you wish. Here's Ron's Rembrandt, and he's replaced the top finial My Pen piece with his initials, RD. Might do that. Perhaps this tiger eye 
might look nice on the bottom of that barrel. Although I am worried that the rounded nature of that semi-precious stone might rub the inside of the cap when it's posted. The magnetic cap pulls off to reveal a gold-plated brass section with a lovely V, inverted V, repeated pattern, which mirrors the cap band towards the number six size gold-plated steel Schmidt broad nib and black plastic feed. The nib and feed are part of a nib assembly that unscrews for replacement or maintenance. And this section isn't slippery at all, even though it's metal. This matte gold plate treatment is very nice all over the pen. It allows for some grip on the section and doesn't attract fingerprints, which are the bugaboo for many of us that suffer from OPD, obsessive polishing disorder. And the deeply engraved pattern on the top of the section acts as a grip purchase as well. Very nice. And because there are no cap threads, the transition from the barrel to the section is ultra smooth. You can see the notches right here and there that correspond to these little nubs on the inside of the cap that align the cap and barrel flutes when you cap the pen. It just requires a slight twist if it doesn't meet up with it perfectly. It's very easy and it makes for a great fidget spinner as well. Let's get a closer look at this nib. I don't know if all Visconti steel nibs have moved to Schmidt now or just this model, but this is the big draw for the Mythos over the Mirage for me. The number five size nib on the Mirage, Van Gogh, and Breeze just looks puny to me on the pen. And the number six size on the Rembrandt has always looked like a better balance visually. And of course, I appreciate big nibs. I like big things. The size of the nib has an elegant triple line border, the Visconti V logo, Visconti, and a B for broad. These are either deeply engraved or roll stamped into the nib. If it's roll stamped, it means Visconti is custom ordering these nibs from Schmidt. The section unscrews to reveal the included high quality standard international Schmidt converter, and the top of the barrel shows a metal insert, so the threads are metal on metal. The inside of the cap shows a cap liner, which is actually the magnet that closes the cap. I assume it's treated somehow to resist the corrosive effects of the ink. The cap posts deeply and securely with the aid of that magnetic cap and the magnet in the base of the bottom finial. And it sort of takes two stages to seat properly. And of course you have to line up the flutes in order to get that to sit properly there. Once it's posted, it rattles a little bit, especially if you shake it. But unless you're planning on doing jumping jacks while writing, it isn't a problem. Of course, doing jumping jacks while writing might improve your cursive. Unposted, the pen is plenty long enough to write with comfortably and is nicely balanced. I prefer to write with this pen posted. It isn't inordinately long and the metal section keeps the balance tilted towards the page. The edge of the cap band, however, is a bit sharp, especially when the pen is posted, you can feel it against your hand. I would have liked it if they had rolled that edge a little bit better. And here's something I like about the Mirage as well. Where those flutes line up on the barrel is just a perfect place to place my thumb and makes the pen feel like part of my hand. I haven't been as delighted as this for any Visconti fountain pen previously. It is just delightful from the gorgeous look of the pen to the feel in the hand and especially this nib on the page, but I get ahead of myself. This pen is available for $165.54 US from Applebaum, which compared to the embarrassingly high price I paid for my Van Gogh three years ago, is extremely reasonable for what you're getting here. It's also an amazing deal since it is $45 US less than the Van Gogh model, which I now consider to be inferior to this one. And I got a further 15% discount from Applebaum for just adding a review of a previous purchase. You can get 10% from Applebaum on your purchase by entering the coupon code FRIEND when you check out. Then just enter a rating on the website about your purchase once you receive it, and Applebaum will send you an email with a code for your 15% for a future purchase. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Visconti Mythos Apollo with a Visconti Rembrandt, a Visconti Breeze, a Visconti Opera Vertigo, and a Leonardo Momento Zero in Prunia. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. The Visconti Opera Vertigo was a gift from Colorado Don, 
and it uses the same kind of magnetic cap with the slots in the barrel to keep the facets of the pen aligned. The shape of the Opera Vertigo is the classic Visconti squared circle. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. All of the nibs, with the exception of the breeze, are number six size steel. But the Opera Vertigo has a 14 karat gold overlay, which is very interesting. You'll be seeing a review of the Vertigo soon. And one thing to remember, like all siblings, Viscontis don't like playing together. So you have to keep them separated or they end up fighting with each other and pushing each other around and sticking to each other like siblings do. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper as always. And this is the Visconti Mythos Apollo and it has a number six size steel nib. Let's check the wetness. Look at that and talk about smooth. Just like glass beautiful and the ink today is an ink I bought specifically for this pen and it's the first Graphon Faber-Castell ink that I have purchased in a bottle and it is I wonder if I can get the whole thing in here Graf Von Faber 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 Castell Hazelnut Brown and I just think it matches this pen beautifully. I know some people aren't all matchy matchy but this pen just begged to be matched and this broad nib is just incredible. And here are some close matches to the Hazelnut Brown from Inkswatch.com. As to line variation it's already very broad but you can see maybe I'll get a close-up of this I'm just gonna bounce that nib a little bit look at that it has a nice amount of bounce to it for a steel nib that's really delightful and this nib makes a 0 0.8 millimeter line which makes it a Western broad well medium to broad almost broad and a Japanese broad to broad plus on my Richard Binder line width chart which you can find linked in the description below and for our quote So I guess no means no, except if you're a god. And some reverse writing. It's a good deal scratchier, but very thin and very dry. And some quick writing. That was me missing the page right there. This feed has no difficulty keeping up. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Up to now, I had a huge list of things that disappointed me about Visconti. From overpriced and undersized steel nibs, slippery metal sections, splitting and breaking resins, rusting magnets, gushing fire hose palladium nibs on some homo sapiens, and inconsistent quality and control, to name a few. I bought a hugely overpriced Van Gogh, Starry Night, and sold it. I bought a Mirage. Okay, pen, but I sold it. I wanted to buy an Opera Master, but I couldn't afford it. And then the Mythos came along and I had to have it. I was really apprehensive about trying this pen for the first time. I examined the pen carefully from top to bottom and only found one slight flaw. This sharpish edge on the edge of the cap band. Everything else about this pen I love. There's also that little rattle that happens when you post the pen. 
but it actually doesn't bother me when I'm writing. And the pen is gorgeous. It is classic in its Greek styling, elegant and not at all ostentatious. The matte gold hardware and section have a beautifully muted luster and feel awesome to the touch and eliminate fingerprints. The magnetic cap works very well. It is actually fun. Posted, it wobbles a bit, but it doesn't bother me while I'm writing. And the nib, oh, the nib is just like hot butter on silk. It's a glorious writing experience. But the thing that I love the most is that this Visconti, I will not only keep, but I'll also write with it consistently. Oh yeah, and one more thing. It's also, in my opinion, the first Visconti out there that's a reasonably priced pen for what you get. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens, as I'm now an affiliate of the online store, and when you shop at Goldspot using my link, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section, and you'll get cool emojis badges and sneak peek unboxing videos as well and that just leaves it for me to say thank you for watching and that's all she wrote i made this